I think that one of the most disturbing things happening right now in our society that not enough people really talk about is the fact that dudes pretending to be women are now being put in the same prisons as actual women. And I don't feel like this is talked about enough and it's often overlooked because people don't sympathize with people who are in prison or who are in jail or who made mistakes, you know what I mean? But regardless if you're a, you know, you made a mistake and you're in jail or prison or not, as a woman, I don't think that you should have to share the same cell or the same facility as a dude. And nine times out of 10, the dudes who are doing this are dudes who never identified or pretended to be a woman before. Most of them are already in jail for doing violent and, you know, R-wordy things towards women. But they're literally putting these predators, these creeps, into jails with actual women. And it's not just happening in America, it's happening in other countries as well. And, you know, at some, at some point you have to draw the line. If you want to pretend to be the opposite gender, go right ahead. I honestly don't care. But understand that there are levels in which you can take things. You can't expect the whole world to bend the knee to your imagination. But it looks like to me the world is starting to bend the knee to these people's imagination. So the conversations have been had, jokes have been made about, well, what if you're going to make, you know, a, a trans jail? And, you know, we have men competing in women's sports, which is also disgusting if you ask me and there's been conversations about what if there was a trans league well it looks like colorado is going to be the first place to actually experiment with this they're not coming out with the trans sports league but they are possibly about to build a new jail specifically for people who claim to be a gender that they're actually not i don't know what other way to put it and, you know, <laughs> this is absolutely, it's stupid. But if this w is what it takes to keep these people separated from actual women, then I'm okay with it. And, you know, it's funny because when you really look at these things, you quickly realize that there are no women pretending to be men that want to be in men prison. That does not exist. Like, it, it, it's unheard of. But there's all types of dudes wanting to be locked up with women. And I mean, can you really blame them? You, 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 these guys are facing however many years in prison and all they got to do is say, hey, I feel like a girl today. And next thing you know, they're locked up in a room full of women. It's like a dream come true for these creepos. But now they're supposedly, possibly, going to build a facility just for these confused people. And what could go wrong? You know what I mean? Is this necessary? No, I think everyone should just go to the jail that they are, you know, if you're a man, go to man jail. If you're a woman, go to woman jail. But if this is the answer they're going to come up with, fine. I'm just wondering how many of these type of people are you actually going to lock up? Is it, is it really called for to build a whole new facility? And I think it's going to be funny when we see the number of men pretending to be women in the prison system drastically drop once they realize, oh, you're going to actually go to a jail with a bunch of other dudes in wigs as opposed to, you know, a jail with actual women. But let's dive into this article and see what's going on here. Colorado is poised to become the first state in the country with segregated holding cells for trans women in prison if a judge signs off on it. After a class action lawsuit was filed by several trans inmates in 2019 against the Colorado Department of Corrections, alleging discrimination, harassment, and assault, a judge is scheduled to rule in a, on a consent decree that would bring further changes, including surgical sex changes and hormone, tr and hormone treatment to the state's penitentiary. So, in other words, while these people are locked up, your taxpayer dollars will be used 
to get them bottom surgeries <laughs> and it will be used to give them hormones which will drive them absolutely insane it will probably make them very moody and violent which is a recipe for disaster when you have a bunch of these freaks mentally ill people all you know locked up together in the same room what could go wrong now as horrible as this sounds i think that this deserves a reality show orange is the new black has nothing on this love after lockup um what is it 60 days in listen me maybe a couple of you in the audience we can get together this is a great idea for a reality show. I'm already pretty good, you know, when it comes to, uh, how can I put it? I have an idea of the type of content that people want to see, I think. So I think if I got, you know, a couple of skilled cameramen and editors together, we can go right in here into this trans prison and make a fire bomb ass reality show. No doubt about it. But let's go ahead and dive back in. The consent decree, a court-ordered settlement in a legal dispute, would also require all trans women currently or previously in um, the CDOC to receive a $2.1 million payout depending on the severity of the alleged assault, discrimination, and harassment while in prison. Rewards could range from $1,000 to $10,000 per plaintiff. Hold on. So we got these violent criminals who are all pretending to be women. Now they're going to get their new, like, nice little facility. It's brand new. You don't have to deal with the black mold or the rats or anything like that. We're going to put all of you loonies together in a new facility. Got nice new little bars and everything. Nice new paint job. We're going to have taxpayers pay for whatever freaking surgeries and hormones you want to pump yourself with. And we're going to give you $10,000. What? What? Let's go forward. Several of the plaintiffs seeking judicial, uh, judicial approval of the consent decree are currently serving life without parole for homicide and assault. Keith Rivers, 46, now known as Cupcake, is currently serving a life sentence for murdering a victim outside a tavern in 1999. According to the class action lawsuit, Rivers came out as trans in 2004 and has made numerous requests for surgical treatment for her, his, gender dysphoria, which have been denied. And he longs for competent talk therapy related to gender dysphoria. Another plaintiff, Andre Caspiers, 47, who goes by Lavinia now, is also serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole for first-degree murder. Capers is currently being held in the Denver Women's Correctional Facility. So, you know, people like to think that this is a big conspiracy. None of this stuff is true. It's true. Here we have a 47-year-old man in jail for life for killing people, and we're going to put him right here in the same jail as all of these women. What could go wrong? But now they're like, hey, these people, they've gotten such unjust treatment, these freaking violent murderers, we need to castrate them and we need to allow them to take whatever medicines they want. This is absolutely insane. Let's go forward. Jordan Galantine, known as Jane now, is 33, is also serving prison time for attempted ending self by cop and assault. Galantine says he lives in a constant state of severe anxiety and depression due to lack of medical treatment for his gender dysphoria. Plaintiff Corin Raven, 35, known as Candace, is currently serving time two for separate assault charges and is scheduled to be released in 2026. Raven has attempted to end themselves... Oh, wait, this, listen, this gets into some really crazy stuff that I can't even talk about. Whoa, let's just say the person tried to change their gender on their own while in jail. Yeah, gross. So I think you get the point. The article goes on to name like five more dudes 
who are all pretending to be women who all have kind of either like killed people or R worded them and they're in jail for basically, if not the rest of their lives, then close to the rest of their lives. These are the people that they want us to sympathize with. They want to use taxpayer dollars to build a new facility specifically for these people. And then they want taxpayer dollars to fund whatever treatments they want, not treatments that they need, but you know, if you want to chop it off, you can chop it off, do all that stuff. They want taxpayers to pay for hormones and what have you. And then all oh, it's all wrapped into one. Once this happens, each one of these people is going to be part of this big payout where trans inmates throughout Colorado are all going to be given, you know, roughly around $10,000. So I don't know what other way to put it other than it's kind of being incentivized. Like, hey, go ahead and identify this way, do this, and we'll give you all of these benefits. You want to say that you're a woman now? We'll lock you up with women. We'll give you $10,000. We'll give you state-of-the-art, top-of-the-line medical treatment and do whatever you want to do. All on our dime. We'll pay for it all. Come one, come all, chop your balls off and come to this new jail and we'll give you $10,000 that you could spend on honey buns and ramen noodles as you recover from your bottom surgeries. Huh. I don't even know what to say. I'm kind of at a loss for words. I'm at a loss for words here. Usually I would have something to say, but I am really running blank right now because this story absolutely speaks for itself. It speaks for itself. And me even providing any commentary to this will probably get me kicked off of YouTube. But this is happening in Colorado as we speak. It's going to happen other places as well. Who knows what will come of this, but like I said, I'm sure the outcome, it will be horrible, but possibly entertaining. Let me know your thoughts though about this down in the comments below. If you're feeling generous, you can donate to the channel via Cash App, or you can help the channel for free by liking and subscribing. But with that being said, always remember to remain opinionated.